do you agree with me that this has a bit of a, you know, I'm trying to make a name for myself tinge to it or am I reading? Well, yeah. I mean, look how just even the article, if you want to pull up the article so we can just read how it was even titled, right? It was titled in a way to be triggering. Like it makes it sound like the black students on campus were like, we don't want any white people here. Well, how many black people was this? Who's in charge of this house? Um, To your point, it's only one of numerous houses. Why that specific location? You know, we have to do, we have to think. How was the article titled, Jay? Because I felt like the even the article title was meant to trigger um, a conversation that's not exactly so there's what a lot the situation of is. I'm not going to look at like the Fox News one. Um, no. Here's the New York Post. Off campus, UC Berkeley student housing bans white people from common areas. But um, the Fox News headline is white people banned from off campus UC Berkeley student. Da, 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 da. Berkeley Co-op bans white people from common areas. That's on the Daily Mail. Uh, Zero Hedge, UC Berkeley student housing. Okay, so it looks like some of these uh, outkick the coverage. They did UC Berkeley Co-op housing bans white people. Okay, so it looks like a lot of these at least tried to get it right because, but these are all a few, you know, a few days old or whatever. Right. Several of these originally had the headlines as uc berkeley itself okay right and i think that was the first thing about it i think the articles are misleading would you agree or disagree with that oh no it was deliberately misleading for sure berkeley is not the radical school that it's renowned for from the 60s that era is over and although i feel like there's always the same 200 people that show up to protest everything on the berkeley campus from my experience that campus was not nearly as liberal as people thought it was. Just because there was a lot of protesting doesn't mean those protests were being held by liberal people. I mean, there's a very strong undercurrent of conservatism on that campus. Would you agree or disagree with that? I definitely agree. I think the Republicans on the campus have a tremendous amount of sway. Uh, The teachers are not as liberal as people think. I mean, from my experience when we were there, most of the protests that occurred there, most of the professors did not get involved in the protests and and that sort of thing. So I feel like it has this reputation of like all the professors being like liberals and, you know, the tree huggers and the, and, and it's really, that wasn't really my experience there. What Speak to your experience of the politics on the Berkeley campus. The politics of the Berkeley campus reflect Europe. You've got a broad swath. You've got people that are hardcore libertarians, anarchists. Mm-hmm. You've got, Communists, you got revolutionary communists, communists, socialists, uh, democratic socialists, and then just your plain Jane Democrats and your plain Jane Republicans. It's it's mm-hmm. not that the the campus in and of itself is you know exclusively a whole bunch of hippies that want to that want to burn down capitalism and all of that. Um, there's a whole bunch of people that you know are really smart and want to work hard and get a good internship so they can get a good job. Right. Um, there's people who join organizations that invest money. There are multiple investment clubs. I started an investment club there. There's, yeah, uh, there's, yeah um, with uh, with Arian and uh, and Iwanis. Um Yeah, there's there's everything there. Uh, there are also folks who will they'll sit down and you know talk about talk about revolution. I think that's the cool part about the Cal campus is you have a broad swath. You don't just have two flavors. Democrat and Republican of everything. You got plenty of Democrats who disagree. You got plenty of left leaning people who disagree on a lot of things. In fact, the biggest political club on the Berkeley campus is the Republican club. Why? Because they're all in one club. Right. So they're reporting it as a 30 room, a five story, 30 room home. I don't believe it was five stories. And it definitely wasn't 30 rooms, accommodate 56 students that you're unless they've up. unless they've done some type of reservation, renovation, sorry. Yeah. yeah and increase the point. property space from our time there. Yeah. So this post all goes all the way back to uh oh no, August 15th. No, no, no. So it's, it's one outlet got it before everyone else called the college fix. They were the first ones to report it, I guess. And then mm-hmm. everybody else jumped on it um over the weekend. 
Mm. And yeah, it, this all started because someone posted on Reddit uh, the rules from from one of the co-ops. Of things that we might want to note, first of color theme house, five story, 30 room home that can accommodate up to 56 students exists to serve low income, first generation immigrant and marginalized students. It's part of the Berkeley Student Housing Cooperative. Uh, was established in 2016. The POC house was, has faced its share of internal problems. One former member wrote on Medium uh, that the house has become known for its call out culture perpetuated by the lack of intersectionality. Several members have been criticized for being white slash white passing, aligning themselves with whiteness or allowing white violence in the house. Stephen Ross, cooperative uh, experience manager for the Berkeley Student Cooperative, told the College Fix that Neither BSC nor POC House has an official policy excluding white guests from common spaces. That doesn't sound like it. It sounds like they right. have pretty much an official policy. He says white people can and do live in the POC House, but the focus for POC House is providing a safe and supportive living environment for people of color. Uh huh. Yeah. Noted that each of the 20 BSC houses have their own culture and practices that develop over time. At POC House, members actively work towards not making whiteness central to the experience for members living in the house. What does that even mean? Right. We are t- we're getting too hung up on the small stuff and we're, we're losing the focus. We're losing the goal. It says um, people of color have been negatively impacted by past events like racist and discriminatory remarks made by Trump and police killings in addition to facing daily experiences of covert and overt racism. And none of that gets changed by living at, at this house. Right. Um, I guess if you're I guess if you're assuming if you're assuming that if you if you live anywhere else, you're just going to be you're you're going to deal with a ton of microaggressions living with anybody else on campus. You know, that's I I feel sad for you. I at the same time, I do understand, you know, when people are living in apartment housing and you don't you don't know any of your neighbors. It's true. Uh, you, can, you, you know, can you're away to college for the first time. You know, yeah. you might not. You might not have exposure to college campuses. You might be needing. I mean, I met people at Berkeley. I met white people at Berkeley who had never met black people before until Berkeley, which I I was astounded by because coming from a city, I don't know how you could ever walk this planet and not meet someone from almost every racial group. But to my surprise, there's a lot of areas in California that are predominantly white where if that's what you were lived if that's the area you lived in that's where your family's from that's where you went to school i learned quicker than i um had imagined that there were quite a few people at berkeley who had no exposure to any ethnicity or people of color until berkeley so their understanding of these racial groups is based on what they've seen on tv right um and you can tell based on their comments in the classroom sometimes quick point of information i think what i read earlier was wrong and this actually is at Castro, not Afro House. Castro House is right next to Afro. It's down the street. It's also on Prospect and okay. up the street of it. So that's why the dimensions seem wrong to me. Okay, so it is not, we stand corrected. It was not the Afro House of old during our era at Berkeley, which was uh, between 2009 and 2011. Well, I was there to 2014, technically 15, but yeah. Okay. Um, so era, but... it from Castro to POC. So interesting. So we have a POC themed house and we have Afro house and they're down the street from each other. Mm-hmm. Um, it used to be called Castro. Okay. That's why it sounds so big. Yeah. Cause Castro was a lot bigger. I mean, one of the biggest leaders on campus lived, lived at Castro, this dude who was in a, in a wheelchair and was like a student Senator and shit. Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but he was always super cool. Give him a little fist bump. Yes. He happened to be a white guy. But, you know, he was he was very much all about bringing people together. Um, right. most beloved people, honestly, in, in, in the co-ops at that time. Uh, OK, so yeah, this doesn't change anything in terms of how I feel about it. Um, mm-hmm. it sounds like we still have the Afro house going. Uh, so that's cool. However, everything that, that you and I have just said, I, I believe it still stands. OK, yeah. I, I totally get the idea of microaggressions when, especially when you're living with people that you don't know and you want to avoid that. That's cool to have the safe space, but to say that like nobody else can have a guest who's white there. Right. How about you just say, Hey, don't bring anybody over here. Who's going to be, who's going to start a problem or be an asshole. 
Right. And we've got to differentiate between somebody who's an asshole and somebody who's a racist. Yeah. Or, or can you just say, Hey, like, you know, let's have a, let's have a common courtesy rule where, Hey, if, if something, if there's a heated discussion and somebody's a guest, you know, if we ask them to leave, you know, you need to ask them to leave and you need, and don't put up a fight about it. You know, we don't necessarily need all these rules to get around to, to essentially just find a way of spelling out. Don't be a dick. A right. different ways. We don't need a million rules for that. Just don't be. A no. Dick. no. And we've got to be able, again, to differentiate between somebody who's a dick, somebody who's a racist, someone who shows a pattern of behavior, somebody who's a card carrying Klansman, somebody who's ignorant and unexposed. These these are different things. They There are different intentions behind them. And those intentions matter. They matter in a court of law. They should matter in our dialogue and our social cultures. Yeah. It should, but I think everyone just wants to rush to judgment because we all want to overreact and have a viral moment. And, and, you know, everything is all about trying to be conducive towards generating a response from social media. So we want right. to just, you know, make assumptions. We don't care about context and we just want to have the outrage. We would just want to have the reaction. I believe just like right. we talked about with the headlines, these headlines are clearly made to just get a reaction from people. You know, some of them yes. literally are regularly worded where like the, the first word is capitalized and the other words are not. And then white people is in all caps. Mm-hmm. Right. You see, Berkeley I don't think being reactive. White people. Right. And I don't think being reactive is the same thing as being strategic. And I think what our communities are lacking is a strategy. OK, what like say you're outraged, say you're upset. OK, you're outraged, you're upset. Now what? I mean, just stand on social media for three days and then move on to the next topic you're going to be outraged about. Well, that's that's all. So that that's the thing about being an activist influencer. Oh, you don't have to get anything done. Right. Activists of old were judged by what they got done, how many people they were able to organize to get something done. Martin right. You Luther actually King had to produce the something. Civil Rights Acts done. He wanted to get right. the Voting Rights Act actually passed. It right. wasn't just, you know, I want to get a more more followers so that I can get a TV show or a book deal or or get, you know, get a whole bunch of uh, uh, sponsorship, you know, get, get endorsement deals for my for my social media shit. And then I'm just mm-hmm. going to tweet out some shit and try to get somebody fired. Like there was more action that actually been in people more than just the activists themselves. Right. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And I and I think people mistake, you know, changing their profile picture on social media as activism. That's supporting activism. I don't think that that's activism. I think that th- those that to me is demonstrative of being an ally. That's not demonstrative of being an activist. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't even show up at the damn protest, you just changed your fucking bro- profile. Or worse, the people I can't stand, people who show up at the protest for five minutes just to take a picture and then leave. Right. And then break out and go wherever. Right. Absolutely. And there's quite a bit of that. I mean, it, it's basically activism fraud. Your activism posing. Activism. You're not really moving the needle and your goal really isn't to. Your goal is to bring attention to yourself. Yes. Disappointing yes. to be continued on the next episode of Raw Food. <laughs>